to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Styles and Rosenberg. Hey, it's Ebro in the Morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, and we have the amazing Jesse Reyes yeah. in the building. Friend of the show. She gets friend of the show status. She gets friend oh. of the show status. I don't oh, give oh. that out often. <laughs> yeah, this is like right. your third or fourth time. Let's go intimacy. Yeah. So wonderful <laughs> to see you. We were um we were all like being nosy and watching, well, like the whole world was watching uh like little videos and like pictures of your album release party in LA. Mm -hmm. yeah. So many so many people came to support you. Bananas. Yeah, I just saw that headline, and I was, I, can I be honest, I, like, you're our friend. I, I was like, oh, I didn't even know Jesse was popping like that. I was like, I, was, I didn't know you were popping, but I thought you were I our friend. I feel like that's a little, you, you know. That wasn't a backhanded compliment. Okay, okay, it was okay. a front forward compliment. Front forward. And I was like, oh, what? Because I just, I just love your music and how talented you are and think about you in our little Thank world. You. But I was like, oh, man, the whole industry is checking for young Jesse. Has it been like that for a while? Um, Yeah, but I just don't really, I, I suppose, yeah, I've always felt, like, internal support from artists that I've worked with and artists that are homies from back home but i just don't really be outside like that often has mm. anyone surprised you to be like wait a second you rock with my music like anybody came up to you that you were just like wow i i, I would never have thought has that ever happened to you yeah but it happens more so with like um it's more so when like somebody like a seven-year-old lady comes up to me right, right, and right. she's like listen it's been a long time since i resonated with someone wow. like that shit's stands that that catch me as a, like as, and also with parents that have like five-year-old kids that shouldn't be listening to <laughs> cuss filled music you know what i mean and right. the parents are like i don't care that you do that because i just appreciate that my daughter sings your shit and wow it's got a little bit of substance some spinach in it and i was like all right but cool that that's so dope that spectrum that right. spectrum kind of floors me more than peers you know right. peers are great but just Transcending the age gap, I guess. Yeah, is what yeah. you could say that. Yeah. That's yeah. a thing. That's definitely a thing. Yeah, that that floors me. Uh, you were we were, when we were going on the air. You were telling us a story about the uh, the last time you'd really like taken an opportunity to turn around and smell the roses. Yeah, you put it. Yeah. What, what was that story? Well, damn, it's been it's been from a week like album release week, so we've been doing interviews like crazy and running around. And yesterday, um, someone started talking about the title. Title X, I think, in mm -hmm. Barclays years ago when I first did Gatekeeper and I did Figures there, and it was just they were they were really just really painted the picture there like he was backstage, looked so unassuming, and then all of a sudden you hit the stage and everyone was like, "Whose man's is this?" And then when I came backstage, everyone was like a slow clap, and all of a sudden it was like, "Oh, people recognized it," you know, and they were like, "How many years ago was that?" And they started counting, and it had been like I guess at this point like four or five since since that show, and um. And then the next interview, someone brought up longevity. And it's crazy because when you're so focused on legacy and when you have that, like, ambitious hunger deep down, it's hard to smell the roses because you're always just looking forward and looking at a kingdom so much so that you forget to, like, honor the bricks. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so just now you were like, oh, how long has it been that you've been a full-time musician? Mm -hmm. And it's wild because I guess the first time it hit, which was years ago, I think over five years ago, it was... um crossing the border with an American customs officer that was like, what do you do? And also used to saying, I bartend or like I teach dance or whatever the fuck. And I was like, I'm, I'm a musician. Like, and I like, you know what I mean? It was the first time that I was like, oh, I, that's where I get all my money. That's <laughs> yes, how I live. I live off my how art. You make a living. Fucked, <laughs> fucked. So that was, that was, that was a moment. And yesterday thinking about like, Oh, I'm I'm blessed. Like I've been living off this for years. I've been able to retire my parents. I've been able to just, you know, move, move within my art, move within this life, feeling like I'm in my vocation or feeling like I'm sitting in vocation. So I just, it's just fucked. <laughs> it's just fucked. <laughs> tell us about how, how does it feel, and tell me how because I know I know your background, but you just you just said retiring your parents. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I know they're, uh, your, your family is from Colombia, correct? Colombia, yeah, yeah. Si senora. So I just think about, you know, it's like a, a lot of us don't, are not able to do that just yet, right? Mm. Just yet. But tell me about being able to do that and, and letting them know, like, mommy and papi, like, you don't have to work anymore. Like, you're good. It's wild. I just, we were just talking about our fair when I was like, oh, motherhood, mother, how's motherhood? How's everything? Because yeah. it's one of the most beautiful things, you know, gifted to people. And, but it, it's also, I've heard that it's one of the most, um, fulfilling but also one of the most thankless particularly in my case because i was a dick growing up like i feel like i had a massive shift when i was 18 19 from from 11 to 19 
my parents were dealing with a decade of shit. Like mm. it was just rough. It was rough, and I was I was lost, and I I was just lost. Um, and so then when I came out the other side, and I came out of depression and the shit I was going through, and I looked around for me, the people who were standing there still were them. And I also have come to learn that I'm like not everyone's blessed with having that like God given blood family some people have to choose their family because mm -hmm. that's Absolutely. not a norm you know it's real but for them to be my best friends for them to like ride for them to be honest for me to feel like like i could just trust them and you know it's just different so i don't think i'll ever be able to pay them back fully but at least financially it's like a little you know i wouldn't say a start but it's like a solid it's a solid effort but i don't think i'll ever like the the unconditional love that they've provided the home the just everything my connection to culture, who I am, the fact that I can roll my R's, like something so simple. You know what I mean? But like yeah, yeah, yeah. little things like that, the fact that I can feel at home in my own skin is a reflection of them because I was given that freedom. I wasn't allowed to have boyfriends, I wasn't allowed to sleep over, but if I wanted to shave my head and wear curtains to school, I was allowed. So I had that, you know, nurturing that creativity. And they, they, they're, they're, you know, they're dividends. They're just making their money back right now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> They put in the work. They, they let you the shave work. your head and be yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then now they get to win. Now, now they're making their money back. So it's cool. Did you, um, you mentioned a little bit of spinach, as you put it, in your music. A lot of times artists who decide to put, you know, some of the healthy ingredients in their music don't necessarily make the money to be able to take care of their family. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of a new phenomenon that you can make quality music mm -hmm. with, um spinach in it mm -hmm. and and find your audience you know what mm -hmm. i mean because you don't even need you've you've had records embraced by radio but you don't need that you can find your own audience did you always know your plan was like i'm gonna be like a erica a, a most deaf the the people who yeah. who put things in there yeah you know what i mean was that but a plan i was just myself just myself Shout out to Nick from Hard Knocks because he's. we were having a meeting. I was in Colombia last week for like two days shooting something and he's the one that was like, he was talking about pitching something and he was like, someone had said that there was too much spinach in his product. And we we're talking about like Latino projects and not leaning into stereotypes and just, you know, actually following through with like educational, educational creations. Um, but no, it wasn't ever a plan. It kind of just leads back to having had that nurtured and cultivated Your parents just yeah. being that yeah what and were they listening to in the house cumbia salsa and then my brother brought in reggae and then i just I opened up everything and then it was oh. Pac and biggie and then i found amy and then when i started realizing i could go backwards because that's what's beautiful like music is infinite you <laughs> could you could live 200 years and you won't have enough time to hear everything that's been made oh, so yeah. started moving backwards and then listening to otis and then listening to sam and then you know, just, just things like that. But it wasn't ever um, conscious. I never walk, I hate doing that. I hate walking into the studio and thinking like, I'm going to make a song about this today, which I know there's legends that have, are, that are very successful, much more successful than I am, you know, that have, uh, that have that method that walk into the room and say, oh, we're going to make a concept album. We're going to make a concept song. But for me, that feels restrictive. It feels oppressive. So I just like the freedom. And in that freedom, the shit that I've made has been created. So it just is what it is. So you like, is your situation for a studio session, like you have a session, you show up, you invite people, you hang out. What's the, what's the vibe that you set? No, I hate full studio sessions. Got I it. feel so, because it's such an intimate, you're opening yourself up. I'm opening myself up. So like, I just, you know, some people love it. It's just to each their own. Some people love a full studio. Like, get the fuck out, you know? Like, I don't want to tell, I'm talking about my secrets as is. It's different to tell a mic than it is to tell like, you know, a room mm -hmm. full of liquor and people. So yeah, yeah, it's different. Um, but my process is just hi, you are cool. My <laughs> process is just walking in and like feeling the vibes in the room. Usually, I'm pissed or sad when I'm going to the studio because I want to feel that like release. When I'm happy, mm -hmm. I don't feel the urge to make to make. But when I'm sad or pissed, I feel the urge. So you'll get in make. a mood and you'll text your engineer and be like, "Yo, let's go to the studio." Yeah, or I'm lucky that I could just pull up my Dropbox because I have lovely producers that send me folders and worst yeah. case scenario, I could build it in the telly or build it at home, yeah. and then the next Redo day redo it at the studio. Mm -hmm. Walk us through your new project. Yes. Yes um, I feel like I've just changed a lot. I feel like I've, I found this book called The Power of Now at the beginning of the pandemic that like changed me by Eckhart Tolle. And, and, um, and it just made me more present and more willing to be more vulnerable, more willing to be more open, more willing to not so much identify with, mm, 
with wounds that I've gotten in the past. Yeah. So that's why I guess the songs aren't as heavy, which is ironic because I just said I usually go to the studio when I'm sad or angry, but it's just, um, I've just been more open. I've been more open, I guess, and more, f less scared of, um, of love, whereas before I was, you know? It's such a cliche. <laughs> it sounds so lame as I say it, but like real life. Yeah, though, you know what I mean. Life. It's real life. <laughs> it's real life. So it's that. It's a, it's the album's a really introspective. It's me taking inventory of my emotional state, my 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 thoughts, and it's funny because it it kind of goes. The arc is the arc's a little. It's interesting because I start over here before, like during the pandemic, I was just in a toxic spot. I wasn't really feeling that well and I was dealing with a lot of shit and also no one wants to hear a rich bitch complain so I was dealing with it by myself you know going yeah. through it and <laughs> then um after I read the book I started doing the work I like I discovered this thing called Deepak Chopra's 21 day abundant meditation abundance meditation that shifted me obviously the books I'm talking about doing more affirmations eating better understanding gut health understanding that like thoughts aren't real emotions aren't real reality is real so if you ground yourself in those moments and don't let that shit take over your psyche usually you can find equilibrium but i shot from that sad toxic dolo fucked up place all the way over here to so hyper focused on self and healing and legacy and all this shit that like when you do that you almost run the risk of becoming too self-sufficient and then by default you have these walls because you're like i don't need shit from nobody i'm so fucking focused i'm so this i'm so that and then i ended up like I was, I was seeing somebody who was sweet and who was kind and who was honest and who was patient, which was a new world for me mm -hmm. to deal with somebody like that. But I was so focused on self and so hard hardened mm -hmm. that I didn't even have the presence to be able to appreciate that. And also, like, for some people, they love the uh, autonomy and they love the like, you know. But I like partnership. I realized that I'm like I'm not. I like to be a loner, but I realized I like I like to be alone with somebody. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And I, by the time I bagged it, it was just like they had waited enough. Like they had they had put in work and I couldn't even fault them for, for getting tired. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, it yeah. put things into perspective because I was like, oh, I think I've, I just shot to the other side of the, pol the, the, the poles and I got to find that balance, that balance of like openness and not being afraid of love because I know that if I love the way I have, which is loving in a tidal wave and just passionate, like being ride or die for somebody, even if it goes left, I'll be okay. That little I'll be okay was the umbrella for the album because it's just like, man, fuck it. If I just find that equilibrium, fear becomes obsolete. Right, right, right. The bounce back is, is inevitable, you know? So that album's that. Um, do you, all the stuff you said about the affirmations and uh, the feelings aren't real, reality is real. It sounds very, uh, it, it's the kind of conversation I have with people who are like often in 12 step programs or in intense therapy. You know what I mean? Like, and th these are real thoughts that I think about quite a bit. Yeah. You know, I'm, 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 I've dabbled in some therapy. <laughs> yeah. You dabbled a little bit. So yeah. What was, um, I guess what I'm curious about is I find the affirmations and stuff important too to ground myself and be happier and more content with the abundance that we do already have, even yes, when we don't realize it. What, can you describe what feelings it were that you were sort of trying to heal with this way of thinking? Like, mm -hmm. what are you going through that makes you feel like I need to, these affirmations, I need to feel better about things? Lack of self-love, having the voice in my head be against me, which was a rough, like, fuck, you already deal with so much negativity in real life, you know? And, the, and on top of that, if you have the voice in your head against you, like, speaking down on you or just adding more doubt... Or questioning the life that you're given, imposter syndrome, dealing with like just just all those things, and then on top of that, the heartbreak that I I was going through. And this is the guy you just referred to? No, no, that's that the guy I just referred to was a great man. Okay, yeah. I was figuring this, this shit is out. older heartbreak. This is older heartbreak. Yeah, and there's songs about like it's yeah older heartbreak. Um, and holding that resentment, holding that resentment, thinking that. Not even thinking, but I just not being aware that that resentment is just doing myself more harm, which is another cliche, but it's so fucking well, true. So what do you do with your resentments? How do you how do you handle them now? I realize I had to forgive. I had to forgive even if the apology never came and apologies came later. But like at the time, it was just very a, a standstill. So I realized that I had to just forgive and let it go and be present. Being present really helps. Because I was lost in the past. <laughs> Oof. And letting go is such a real thing. It's such a real thing. Yourself. We're very... um. 
We're very big on therapy on this show. Yeah, like same. We talk about it a lot. All of us, you know, go in and out. Some mm-hmm. of us are still in, you know what I mean? And we work through it. Yeah. But I think because um, being on the show and just having people around me who were healing and in the journey of healing, mm-hmm. you know, like really helped me open myself up to accepting help. And mm-hmm. when I, I remember when I started therapy at first, I was like, why am I even here? You mm-hmm. know? And then afterwards it was like, Bleh. yeah, you know, like, a, and, and, and it's crazy because I feel like I have done so much work and I've come so far. And I'm such a better person, but I'm not done. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And just hearing you say, I dabble in some therapy. I can't even imagine because you live in a world as a, a the human that you are, but you also in the public eye. And then you put your art for the whole world to judge, you have to deal with that on top of life's ups and downs. You know what I mean? And it's just beautiful for you to talk about it and to be honest because I feel like more and more people, and especially like in the Latino community, I feel it's like a it's, stigma. it's so important because and, – and you know what? I'm here for your generation and the younger generation because they're all about it. Mm-hmm. And I love that yeah. because I wish like I had that energy around me. And I'm so thankful for that. So I think it's really beautiful that you can be honest and open to the public and be like, "This, I'm just like you. Mm, going through it. It's nice, no? That is more of a norm. It's crazy how much an objective opinion will, like, alter and shift shit. Because you have loved ones, you have family, but it's hard not to look at their opinions as, like, not, not, it just can't, motivated by something else, whether or not that's negative, but sometimes motivated by love. So you're like, you're just telling me that because you love me, right. you know? But a therapist that's not making nothing off you except money. <laughs> right, they're making the money either way. They're making the money yeah. either way, so they're gonna tell you the fucking truth, mm-hmm. you know. So it's just yeah, an objective opinion goes a long way, and they don't even tell you the answers. Like good therapists, they'll they'll be like, well, "What do you think about this? What do you think about that?" And then they'll set it up, and all of a sudden you bag this pattern. Yeah, and so, you're yo, like, the last week I had a thing that me and my fiance had been dealing with this one specific issue that had been like problematic and recurring, and like yeah. we, I knew we'd eventually get it, but it was annoying. Like, and we were kind of getting at our wits end about it. And my therapist asked me basically, it was like, he asked me one question. He was just like, do you feel like you've exhausted everything you could do to help with X, Y, and Z? And I was like, I remember there was something specifically that I knew I could have done to make the situation better that I just hadn't done. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh no, I can, I can do this. I can do that. And I did. And guess what? It completely solved the situation. Okay. And I was like, wow. Um, do you deal with I ask this from personal motivation because a lot of my shit that I deal with comes from it. Do you deal with professional jealousy or no? Like, do you look around at peers and and industry and feel like I need to do this or I need to have this achievement or have that? No, I don't. But because I've had a map from since I entered in blinders on, which I think my negative, like I obviously am not, don't have a perfect fucking professional method, but my... um my downside is the blinders. Like the fact that I don't even look to the right or the left is what fucks me up because then I lack gratitude in the moment sometimes. Mm. So I've had to get better at that. But like the the map for the end goal has just always kept me really focused forward. And I've always heard that if you turn to the side, like that's that's when you fuck up the race, you know? Even if, it, if it's not a race because creativity is kind of just what you make and you only make it a race when you apply like the music industry shit to it. Right. You know, it's so funny you say that though, because you're absolutely right. And I never think about it in that context. And the problem that I suffer with, and I think a lot of other people do too, is that my looking to the left or the right is really going on social media. Yo, facts. That, that shit is That crazy. is what it is. Yeah. You're literally like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Am I doing that? Why are you doing that? Comparison kills. Oh. Comparison kills a lot of joy. Often. You be fucking up thinking that your rose isn't red enough. You know? It's crazy. But yeah, online it's difficult. But not so much professionally, more so love. I realized that early on that I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, that resentment stays because someone else's happiness shouldn't make me feel away. Even if they did me dirty, I should mm-hmm. just be like, let it go. Which is so easy to say, but more difficult to do. But with practice and like training your thoughts and affirmations and talking shit out and all that shit just really helps in opening up and letting the wind take it away. You Have you considered, is, are there other things you want to do? Beyond music, have you considered acting or any other of the arts? I got approached for um, for acting opportunities, but I don't want to fuck up my bandwidth. I want to like do what I came to do first, you know? Yeah. And then feel fija, to- my fija, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then 
and then, then you expand. Jab a little bit, a little something. Yeah, a little something. It'd be nice. What are those called again? That you got when someone's got all four? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not, I would, who's going to say no to that, you know? Why would you not want any? Why would you not? So if God lays it out in front of me and those opportunities come, then yeah. And I've had a few, but again, I don't, I've, I've shown, one of the things I've learned in therapy and learned like in the last couple of years is just to show myself grace and not run myself to the ground. So part of that is not adding something else to my plate when the shit's already overflowing. Like right. I just got to be methodical and be nice, nice to my body. Cause I only got one. So the, the, having grace for oneself is a, is a tough lesson that a lot of people don't have. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You don't learn it till you're sick or till you get injured or till you break down. Sometimes, sometimes I had, to, I was like, it took all that, everything I just listed for me to understand that I was like, Oh, you're being an asshole to yourself. Like, this is why life is treating you like this because you're not even thinking about yourself when you're making these decisions, which sounds altruistic, but it's not. It's more so like sometimes it was just the focus, the focus, the focus, and then you forget that you're not a robot. Like you're human. You got to give your heart some love. So, yeah, maybe one day. Where do you live most of the time? Toronto. In Toronto. Mm-hmm. Do you always plan on being in Toronto? Yeah, probably. I like I like the nomad life, like LA to work, Miami to work, New York to work, Chicago to work. But, but Toronto the base. Toronto's home. Yeah, I think that's a... A good call. I would never be mad at Toronto being home. You know? Like, yeah, it's 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 lovely. And I wouldn't, who would, because I look over at your jacket mm-hmm. and you have the Canadian and Colombian flags intertwined. I do. And I was like, oh man, it's kind of cool that neither of those are American flags. And I say it with all due respect to uh, the, I, I, this is where I want to live. I choose to live I actually here. have an American flag tattoo. You do? No, so you have, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> of, of all the you've, you've gotten to do some crazy collabs already early in your career is there one that you've had that like if you were on a plane and some stranger said to you like oh what do you do for a living mm-hmm. i'm sure this happened and you're like oh i'm a musician they go oh, i'm not familiar and they say have you worked with anyone famous who do you think would be the first person that you pull out to be like well i did do a song with this person i usually if i'm meeting a stranger People have different reactions when you say you're a writer versus your artist. Mm. And sometimes I just prefer the more mellow interaction. Got it. And the more mellow interaction comes from just saying I'm a writer sometimes. So I'll be like, I'm a writer. And then I'll tell them the shit that I wrote. And then it's like, you know, chill. But then the thing is, I started, um, I used to like to do that all the time. And then I talked to a homie of mine and she was like, you need to be careful. We we're talking about something else, actually. And she said something about like confusing the universe. And then I'm like, damn, I'm always talking about power of the tongue. So I got to be a little careful. So every now, like, I'll just, I'll dabble in between. If I feel like someone's energy is, like, up here and I'm down here and mellow, I'll go with, like, I'm a writer. You've I mean, seen that TikTok? Where it get, I'm not lying. <laughs> it's the truth. But have you seen the TikTok where she's, like, I'm an accountant. I'm an accountant. No one bothers you when you're an accountant. <laughs> oh, really? You know what I'm talking about? No, i never seen it's it. It's jokes. But you should look it up. But anyways, it's, like, because sometimes people are... Excuse me. Sometimes people are genuine, and then sometimes people did a line of cocaine, and they're just like, "What's that way?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for that sort of energy." <laughs> and you're locked in because it's like you're in jail. Because now this person's next to you for a five hour flight. Oh, I'm no, like, "No, j- sir. So no, sir. We're not doing that today. I need to protect my peace of mind. I need to show myself grace. And if part of that grace is just making sure that I can set the tone for the flight, I'm a writer, so sir. Hard. She's gonna turn and be like, "I'm an accountant. I'm an accountant." <laughs> I'm an accountant. So you, but you managed to avoid saying anyone. Who is there? Anyone though that? You oh, know? like I'll say, like one kiss with Calvin, you know, or promises, or I'll tell them early on sometimes, like because I used to write, like uh, like one of my first songs I ever sold was for a Netflix show, in in Canada for like 250 bucks, and so I'll be like, oh, you know, Netflix, I write for this kids show because it was a kids show that took the song, so I'll dabble. That's so cool. Yeah, I dabble. I dabble with the timeline truth because right, it's right, the right. truth. It just happened a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happened lying. a little earlier. I'm not lying. It just happened a little earlier. But so is is are you yesy to everyone that you're like close with? Usually, unless my mom's pissed, and then the articulation comes out very really thick. Yeah, Jesse, Jesse got. Oh my God, God forbid she says Nina. Nina's like, girl, if it's Nina, Nina, venga pa acá. Like, oh shit, you're what did trouble. I do? You're I'm in trouble. trouble. Is that often true with Nina? Yeah, it's how they say it too. It's like Ugh. you know what I've been noticing a lot of recently. A lot of like commercial situations in which people are utilizing the term mijo. There was a, hmm. a lot of commercials with oh, yeah. Mijo, Mijo. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, don't get me wrong. I've heard, I've heard Mijo always. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But not so much in like a Burger King commercial. Right, 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 right. No, but it's taking... very, it's common at home though. Well, I didn't grow up with any boys, so no sons, but I, I, it's very yeah. common. There's no, um, there's no girl equivalent of Mijo? Mija. Do people say that? 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, they do? Yeah. I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I only hearing Miho and not Mia? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, um, Jesse, it's so nice to have you. It's thank like, you. We're always so happy to see you. We're Same. always so proud of you. Thank you. We were trying to figure out, like, when was the last time you were here? Because time is a blur because of the pandemic. A but. Blur. I mean, listen, not that much happened. I got divorced. She had a baby. There was a global <laughs> pandemic. That's I, a big list. That's a season. <laughs> yeah. That's a movie. You, you might have gotten divorced, too. You know. Yeah. I, but I'm out here. Okay. <laughs> I'm out here. We made it. Let's go. I'm, you know what? I love seeing people who I haven't seen, like who I who I didn't see during the period where I was miserable. Because like you only get to know me as the happy version of me. I don't need everyone to have the version of like I saw when I, I turned into like um the scream mask for a year. I was just like, eh. Fuck. You know? Yeah. And it's nice. Life. So it's nice to run into you now. Yo, things same. Are lovely. Yeah. Same. Because I was the scream mask for a when, minute when too. When were you the scream mask? In the beginning of the pandemic. I really? mean, shit before the pandemic. I wasn't in a good place when the shit hit. So that's why when it hit, I sunk even deeper. See, my, see, the fucked up thing for me was I was just coming out of it. Laura and I went on this trip to Vegas. We went, went on a trip to Vegas in January. had a great time. It was my first. It had been a year and change since the breakup. And I was like, yo, I'm out. I looked. I have a picture from that day. I looked great. I was glowing. I was like, I'm was out here. Glowing. I'm ready. And then like a month later, pandemic hit. You know I mean? yeah. And shit happens. But then I met uh, my lady during the pandemic. All's well that ends well. How'd you guys meet? Um, I DM'd her. Okay, let's go. Sliding um, in the DMs. <laughs> jeez, jeez. Jeez. It was, um, it was, a, it was a random and it wasn't even, we were looking at the, the original text the other day, the original message. It really, it was a little bit, it was a slide. It was, a, it, I'm not denying it's a slide. It was mm -hmm. a slide. But my intention was not, I wasn't in a super thirsty place at that time. Mm -hmm. I'm telling <laughs> <laughs> I thought because I followed her on Twitter. I'm like, why do I follow this person? She's cute. I definitely went, she's cute, but why do I follow her? And then I clicked on her profile and I was like, oh, she's a photographer. And a really good one. Yeah, I'm like, that's why that's why I follow her. Okay, okay. And then it well, you'll appreciate this because you're into karmic kind of shit, it seems. So earlier that day, I don't know if I've told you this. Earlier that day, I was on I I, I opened up J Date, the Jewish dating app. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what you're on? No. I'm oh. not on it, never been on it. <laughs> okay. So I, I pulled it up and mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I was like, maybe I'll date a Jewish girl this time around. Like, I'm Jewish. I've never really been with a Jewish girl. I was like, maybe mm -hmm. this time, maybe I'll be with a Jewish girl this time around. I went on the JDate app. I scrolled around for a while and I was like, I, I'm a public person. I don't want to go on this. I can't be on an app. It's crazy. I'll look nuts out here. I'm not doing this. That <laughs> same day, <laughs> that same day. <laughs> oh. your story, please. Okay, okay. Yeah. That same day. I see Natalie pop up on my timeline, right? Mm -hmm. I send her the random message. My girl's real government name is not Jewish sounding at all. You would, it comes from the Tunisian side of her family. Mm -hmm. You would think she's Italian if you saw her name. So she writes me back and she's like, hey, I'm a fan of your work. I've always thought you represented for our people well. And I was like, you're our people? <laughs> like, I didn't know you were us. <laughs> And that was the, the beginning. Right. But it's just, it's so random. That was the day right, right, right. where I was like, I think I should look for a Jewish girl. And then she kind of just fell. Yo, if, if a tweet had been sent at a different time, if I hadn't opened my computer, bro, everything had to happen for that tweet to come up. I didn't remember seeing a tweet from her in years. And she was not an active Twitter user. She's more now because of the NFT shit, but she wasn't back then. And she's into NFTs? Jeez. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. Yeah. Excuse me. So wait, wait, real quick. The laugh you just had. You've had this dating app conversation with yourself? I lasted about like maybe 48 hours. Don't hide in wait, your hoodie when you're talking about this. Yes, Come on. You lasted, on what, Raya? You lasted 48 hours. <laughs> on Raya. And Raya is the, is the famous people. It's supposed to be the, you know, well-to-do dating app. And what was up with the message? Like, was it just weird? You just weren't feeling it? I just felt weird. I felt sus doing it, but I was making an effort to, like, move on and, you know, yeah, put, yeah, myself, yeah. Huh, put, <laughs> put myself out there. <laughs> <laughs> making an effort. And then I had my boy, one of my guys, my MD mapper, and I, he was like, we're just catching up. And he was like, yeah. And I told him, he was like, no, you're not. And I was like, yeah, bro. And he was like, what? He's like, you're a high quality woman, Jesse. What are you doing? If you don't need to do, he's like, just, just, you know, it's, he just, I'm not gonna, he just gave me a play by play of how to do it different. He was like, can't believe it. you shouldn't be on that app like it. And he was like, let me see. And I showed him, and, and one of the photos, oh, Jesus. Go ahead, please. One of the photos was like, closer. Can't hear you. Come here. One of the photos was uh, like a professional photo. He's like, you're out here in HD, Jesse. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was like, God, Leo, I was like, God damn. All right, bro. And he just, you know, he big brothered me real quick. Like, Get the fuck off this, man. You got to take a different method, you know, and just, just kind of, because it's not my thing. Some people, you know, yeah. it, some people, it works for some people. But for me, it didn't feel right. I was just trying to get out of my comfort zone. But he like was like, no, you could do this to get out of your comfort zone. Do this to get out. But not a fucking professional photo out here. HD on Yo, this fucking app. We love you for It was story. like your... Because <laughs> it's such a regular thing that people go through. You know how many times I'm trying to convince my single girlfriends, just get on. This is what everyone's doing. Try it out. She's like, what kind of photo am I supposed to post? I feel mm. weird doing this. And this, this. One, this oh, one's yeah. looking at her press photo. She's like, this one will work. Yo, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just trying to get it done. I was trying Yo, to Yo, you jump. posted the back of your album cover, didn't I you? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, here's me. I look cute. Spotify. I look cute. <laughs> HD, yo. Did you, HD. In the two days you were there, did you catch any interesting uh, messages? Yeah, but I'm not ready. I, that's what it taught you me to. I wasn't, I don't, I might be, I don't know, I'm closer now. It's been far removed enough that I feel like, you know, but at the time, maybe even not yet. Maybe I still gotta, I don't, I don't want to repeat the pattern because before I was trying to move on and I just wasn't ready. I wasn't healed. Yeah. I was still dealing with past shit. Healing's not linear. So it's going to be an up and down thing, which I'm ready for. But I think I just, I did like maybe like a few convos, but I was like, I just don't, I don't. It wasn't for you. Yeah, it didn't resonate. How, if you don't mind me asking, how long ago was the great guy who wasn't able to wait for you anymore? Um, like within the last year? Yeah. Oh, it was recent. It was, it was recent. Yeah. Months ago. But yeah. And yeah. And was that like a real, like, did you have to deal with the real, like, I'm now interested in this person's like, no, I'm good and have to deal with that rejection? Yeah, man. Which is a whole new beast. Oh, uh, by the way, that see, I know that I know that all of your affirmations and shit must help because you one of those thoughts if you're in that world is like you can't control other nope. people. You, you can't. And you're like, but why would you not? I'm ready now. I uh, 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 uh. Yeah. and it's like, but he didn't want it. No, people change, things change, and I can't like he waited. I can't even. There's no need. There's not a bone of resentment in me against him because he waited. He tried, you know what I mean? But yes. Like and we're talking him. about Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, Leo. That's right. Leo. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. TMZ, write it down. TMZ Jesse Reyes and Leo. That was something. Yeah. Uh, what could have been? <laughs> what could have been? I would have let him hang on the door longer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh, thank you, Jesse. This thank is awesome. You. You're thank the you. best, Jesse. We love you. Y'all are vibes. Yes, yes, yes. Should I call you Jesse or Jesse? Where we What's your heart, man? If you want to call me Yes, you call me Yes. You feel like Jesse? Yeah, I, I feel really like Jesse. Yeah. Okay, the great. Album says it all. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> go if you have not streamed the album yet. Go stream it. Go stream all of Jesse's music. It's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. Thank y'all.